and to the start of day two. We had a fucking amazing dream and stole some boots. Nothing left to be said. Let's just go. Down the staircase, down the staircase. We'll go in, go in, down the staircase. Oh, the union is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning. What's up? Morning. He gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union must have turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. Yeah, okay. He won't even acknowledge the stolen boots you're wearing. For him, they don't exist. You'll have to bring it up yourself later. If you dare. <laughs> oh, I do not dare. Why do we need to talk to them? Everything points to the Duck Workers Union. The belt used for hanging him. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them. And it won't be easy. What do you mean, rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Well, these the men God told us about yesterday. I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. New skill point. There are so many of them. Maybe we should call in reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. Ah. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own. Ah, way. my leg! They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. I don't keep my legs on the floor. They're always up with me in my chair. So one of them fell asleep. And just moving it sends a shockwave up my leg. Like, ah! Annoying. Yeah, we walk right past. We walk right past them. Yeah. They ain't shit to us. We the fucking popos around here. <laughs> shit, I can't say serious like that. I smell rain. Actually, I don't smell anything. I smell the musk of my own room. Lovely. Anyway, I think the first thing we should do... Hmm... Let's see, I need to do... Oh, Kuno, it's already reset. Wait, have I reset it? Ah, fuck it. Let's go. Just to do... Ooh, hello. You're on the roof. Suck, Coon. You missed a good show before. A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was Right. Wish I could have been here to see it. No, I have some questions. No, I totally did not roll my eyes. Shoot that shit at Kuno, pig o naught. Mm-hmm. Forty-two percent chance. What? Maybe we'll get it. Holy it's not shit! Kuno. It's Kuno S. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, 
like she's done something, something very bad. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Act on it. Try and separate them. Kuno! Psst! Fuck you whispering about. He whispers back. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you. Kuno talks to whoever he wants. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. He hunches down again. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. What do you mean? She smoked someone. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. What if she has, Kuno? That would explain things. Fucking yeah. Kuno knows you don't want to face this right now. This dark shit. Kuno faces this shit every day. Makes Kuno skin crawl. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on. She hasn't killed police officers. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. You said she's insane. She's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Catburn and shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. What's the language she uses? Never Kimpy? Fagari? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of air people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. Some things are too awful to dwell on. The Nakis and Runkaris might be some kind of defense mechanism. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in, like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points at the apartment building behind the fence. What was that, Kuno? Little one twists her neck looking at the building. She was in the hallway. Dripping wet by the fucking shoe rack in the dark. Why was she dripping wet? Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days in the corner. Every time Kuno went out. You said she got in. How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk under a pile of clothes like a dog. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. You don't know her name? No one knows her name. Kuno calls her C. Oh, Kuno told you, he told you this shit was like... How are you dealing with all of this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. He spits. Oh, I'm going. Okay, kid. 
don't fuck with crazy children. No, it's not okay. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting it. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take it away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? Boy looks you in the eyes. Black pupils trying to focus. I can respect that. All right. Now we can do business. Business? Yeah. What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. He starts no longer whispering. Don't look him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Hey, <laughs> cooker. See, it's tension and release with Kuno. Now we releasing. The pant buying shit, that's on now too. 90% discount for Kuno's pig. Kuno can flex. Kuno flexes for hobos. Kuno sees you're in need. He spreads his hand like a baker, presenting a smile. Presenting the goods, a smile spreads across his first face. Savoy fair and a physical instrument. I mean, it's 15 real. Hell yeah, I'm taking that shit, mate. Here, pig. We're fun now. Performance buddies. Kuno unzips his jacket again and pulls the pants out of the plastic wrapping. Kuno can already see you soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. Pig's in Kuno's debt now. Money debt. Right. Uh, I want to discuss the body with you again, Kuno. The fuck about it? Where's the rest of his armor? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. How come? That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. A mutant? Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. What do you mean you threw it away? Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. He performs a kick on the imaginary helmet. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. You threw it in the sea? Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You wanna fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Who do you mean troubadour? Yeah, cocking boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit. Came around pretending like he cares about cows. He means manana. The laid-back striker at the gates. You mean Manana? Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. Yes, this troubadour has it. You can feel it. Well, that's all then. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost! Whoa, whoa, whoa. But first, what was that about running you an errand? And illegal narcotics, Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's gotta throw his dirty popo man at it. Okay. Okay. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Hmm. Who is your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? In your condition? Uh, well, um, how much material are we talking about? Like half. Half of what? A baggy. But, like, in this vial. That's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about half a G. This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. 
I've made up my mind, Kuno. And this is what's gonna happen. Okay. Kuno's listening. See what to say. Lie, you need speed. <laughs> I don't want the speed, but I don't want to say I'm a knock either. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Revishall. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that ship back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Kuno's violent dad's got Kuno's key, so you need to fuck your way in there, go to the pier side, bang on the door till the cleaning gimp lets you in. That's how Kuno does it. Then you go to room 12 and kick down the door, police violence style. That's what Kuno does. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. What the hell are you signing us up for here? I'm gonna kill Kuno's dad. Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not gonna take it. We need to get Trunks away from a miner. Okay, then. Well, I'm out. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Doesn't fucking care? You think Kuno gives a shit about any of this? Kuno doesn't give a fuck. Not telling Kuno I'm a knock. I ain't telling him that shit. That's not what we do, but we got pants. I almost forgot. My current pants give me no savoir faire, but they give me electricity. Not electrochemistry. But who needs that when you can have plus one physical instrument and savoir faire? Oh, ha ha ha. What do I have a shirt? Conceptualization. No suggestion. Right. Eh, yeah, whatever. It's fine. Excuse me! Mr. Manana. So, how'd you like our harbor? Man, it was nice enough. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. You nod solemnly, then turns to you, a wide smile adorning his face. Right. You talk to the boss, eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Kuno told me you were supposed to know about the armor. <laughs> the little boy had the good on his promise. His promise? To get me into trouble. To sick the pigs on me, pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison bitch. He's got eyes everywhere, and the cops in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. Serves me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me into trouble. One bad move is all it takes. Huh. The probe into the armor. What did you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff, mostly. That was the interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into this armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts. Four in total. The helmet was the first to go. A kid says he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. The boots? Well, it looks like you're wearing them. So, as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the cuirass. This is where I left off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold up. Four pieces. Helmet, curious gauntlet, boots. What about the leggings? Oh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore, if they ever did at all. Forget about them. I didn't. I'm ambitious. I'm going to find all of it. All the pieces. All of it? There are junior officers out there, eager to prove themselves. I would leave some for them, but okay. Let's find all of it. A mess is epic then, all across Martinez. I hope it will be a real bonanza for you. So, 
Kuno used us to what? Scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. Contemplates taking a swig of his flask. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. No problem. If you see that kid, thank him from Call Me Manana. Thank him for showing me the way. He Do is you know sincerely me? grateful. He is not tracking down pieces of armor right now. Do you know the way? You look down at the white ceramic sabatons, hugging your arches and calves. Surprised at how well they fit. Your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away, as the plates reorient to your motions. Hmm. I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. The hardened, vitreous enamel, at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. Yeah, I could, you know, study it. Or I could study it. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay, that's a little weird. Um, probably leads to the same thing, though, so... Yes, you should analyze the armor. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. I was expecting this to come up a little bit sooner when I put them on, but whatever. Fair weather. A loose subway so, so, savoir faire. It's a hard move, after all. It really hurts to punch this armor. A sword wouldn't leave even a scratch. A bullet would bounce right off. Still, there must be some flaw in it that would allow you to stand your ground against this dangerous enemy technology. You just have to figure out what it is. Possibly by beating yourself or wearing it. Shooting yourself? Let's see. Well, we need to unlock something, which I have two points to do so. Internalize. Internalization. Okay. So that's going on. The next thing that we can do is we can go inside and talk to the Hardy Boys. Yeah, let's just do that. We already walked right past them like a fucking boss. We don't need to do much shit else. Let's fucking talk to them, mate. Show them that we're the fucking pigs in charge. Uh, but first, I look at the things. It's a bowl. There's spit in it. Reeking of tobacco. Also, Titus is right here, not right here. Yeah, okay. Bubble. Photos of men in overalls, toting guns, and union placards. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. Let's uh, talk to this girl first. Let me handle this. The woman says to the crowd in the mess hall before turning to you. You seem a little different today. Less hospitable. You are far from home, Lieutenant. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. Hey, you're not a gardener. That's right. I'm not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. You're right, Lieutenant. She did seem friendlier sitting on that corner. Not a muscle moves in her face, but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy, who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. She points to the man standing in the middle of the room. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest. If we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Um, you're sure easily have mentioned something about a lawyer, Elizabeth, someone. But you're too dumb to remember what it was. Damn. My logic is fucked. How is that sign cleanup going? Huh? Fuck the police and all that? She said she would clean it. I guess you're not a winner after all. 
She shrugs, almost no reaction. It's in there. She's just stonewalling. <laughs> the, obs the obscene sign. You said you would clean it. Well, better yet. This is not winner attitude, citizen. I have heard about your medical condition. People talk, and I have no patience for it. Or pity. A cheap deflection, but brutal. This did not have the effect you desired, but it did something. What's your role in all this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? What if I want to talk to you? Not Titus. What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. I saw what you were thinking. You want to say, what are you going to do to me? Don't. Just because it's in your head doesn't mean you have to say it. You will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. You will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. You think you want to say, what are you going to do to me? And you will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. Oh, so if I don't say it, I'm not going to lose anything. Okay. Why are you so aggressive? Like, you know, if I, if I don't say it, it's not like I miss something. That's pretty good. Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us, and now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishol. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. The tall, broad-shoulder man takes a sip of his beer. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. Hmm. It's cool and funny. It's wrong. Principle is strong. I like you, socialist. I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. What are the union plans? The world needs a financial buffer zone. No need to get emotional. No one is emotional here. Do your job. Ask your questions, then leave. I should talk to Titus then. But first... Yeah, fuck that. I want to touch this bubble. Touch it. The tomatoes are so thinly sliced you can see through them. Oh my god, they're so sliced. Sounds like Titus has some different voice acting, maybe? Possibly? Let's see. This is where you say you're a bit. Ah, now he's walked forward. A broad-shouldered man points at you with a beer can, and he's definitely a different voice actor. Or the same voice actor with a different voice. It's possible. He's used to giving orders and having them obeyed immediately. You should not indulge him. Detective. Lieutenant acknowledges you with a sharp note. He's leaving it to you. Precinct 57's finest scans the room. Leaving the speaking to you. He trusts you. Maybe against his better judgment. But he does. Let's see. This is where you say your bit. He's just giving orders. Don't say anything yet. Hey. Hey, dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. Cross your arms, mate. What? Is he fucking kidding? Is this guy high or something? Little guy looks at his mates in disbelief. Hey, asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. Lieutenant turns to the broad-shouldered man at the end of the table. First, we need to talk about your attitude. Wow. The RCM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them. Reckless. Swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamrock. He says thoughtfully. Yeah, gave him real nice big dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, 
Jeez. He wraps it up. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. Scan the room first, though. No, no, no. Eyes here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. The boys are too eager to please him to keep their mouths shut. You're gonna get a good head count here. Just wait. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Shout out to Scrawny Rat Face Man. Two teeth missing in the front. Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. Says the 40 something man from the corner with the plectrum hanging from his neck. Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. You notice know gang tattoos. The man must be either Mesk or Ceramarizian. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. A picture of what? Of the actors here. You could take another look at the tracks in the mud on the crime scene. Compare it to these guys. The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? So, you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. A real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yes. Why? Because we took it from the harbor where we worked. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. I must say that this version of Titus is definitely a lot more stern. Maybe perhaps a tad bit more intimidating. At least he, not that the other guy didn't, but you know, this sounds more like a man who actually is taking charge and isn't really there to hear your shit. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. But there's a catch. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. They're playing to their considerable strength in numbers. Don't talk about arresting them. You'll only bring attention to your inability to do so. <sighs> He murdered him. Just like that. No remorse. How many people have you sent to the Shades? Ever felt remorse for them? For sent them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says it as if it were worse than dying. <sighs> what we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. Who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips as she tilts her head. Titus, keep addressing him. He wants everyone to know he's in charge. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? He sounds more amused than angry. He's so sure it's him, but it's not that simple. There's someone above him, or beside him, sharing the leadership. Hard to say who. 
car. Well then. You do. You give the commands. That's right, asshole. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? He looks around for approval. <laughs> I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No. You did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes paper, fills out forms. The others can't read. But on that night, they all acted as one man. So, when did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. Fixer turns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean the representative for Wild Pines? The shipping company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Yeah, but uh... Why did you kill him? Why? Cause he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. So, he was a mercenary. That's it. I am. He stepped out of line. He repeats, jaw clamped shut like a vice. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. ex oranese special forces. A live grenade. Right here, in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on. How do you even know he was in special forces? Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm Oranese, goddamn special forces! And I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Oranese paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some kind of animal. Right. But what did he actually do? Wrong. Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, Threatened to kill some as a warning. He wipes spittle from his mouth. There's a slight unease in him, suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates. If we don't let the scabs in. If we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. He started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls. Grab one of ours mid karaoke right there on the stage. He grabbed someone. Lieutenant's trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah, this girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young, gets into the second verse of Love a Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming, "Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt?" Then he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Ah, he shakes his head in disbelief. Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted? Raped, he said. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Right, but who did he rape then? 
This is a very serious allegation. No. You're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Despite the stonewalling, you can slip one more question in. I'm going to ask for one last time. Who did the dead man rape? Titus, do not answer. You have been forthcoming enough. Fuck off, Carl. She's gone through enough without you harassing her, too. She doesn't need more embarrassment. What are you talking about, embarrassment? If someone has been sexually assaulted, we need to... What you need is to get the fuck out of my face. I've had enough of explaining myself to you fucks. He's dead. It's done. As you can see, these men can only take so much baseless scrutiny. I'm doing my best to keep the situation civil, but... What follows is a slow head shake. It's true. She was the only thing holding him back. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck. Until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? You're pretty sure you've had at least two years of cop school and many more of active service. The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? The lieutenant goes in for the leg sweep. Titus does not see it coming. Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sun. That's right, lawman. And then we hanged the fuck. Ah, uh, Mr. Tats, what did you use to knock the victim out with? My fucking elbow copper. Some are unboxing a style. And where did all this action take place? Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? They keep speaking for Titus, so that he wouldn't get his hands muddy with too much explaining. Let's see if we can up our composure just a tad. One of my items is dropping it, but let's bump that up. 58%, that's pretty good. Actually, okay, never mind. They're admirably, surprisingly composed. The entire room. Given how many questions you've lobbed their way. All of them? Maybe one of them is fidgeting, cracking under pressure. Well, this one. But he's always fidgeting, so don't get your hopes up. Right. I have other questions about the lynching. Like what, Copper? How does the bullet in his head factor into this? Huh? A sip of beer makes a surprise go down easier. There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. Another sip. He's tight lips suddenly. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. This was a good move. Also, notice how Titus doesn't like her much, especially when she's calling the shots. So, what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. Tenet closes his notebook. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we are going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beating. rent -a cop So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. Forget about their games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. Oof. 
God's dam. Godly 16. <sighs> you still haven't explained the bullet I found in the hangman's head. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hangman's head. You're right, copper. That is mighty curious. Indeed, mighty. How did it get there? Lieutenant is fixed on Titus. Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. Right. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. I'll ask you again. Where was this? Show them the bullet. In the victim's head. Wow! He's got it in a real evidence bag and all! Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. I think the hanging was a cover-up for the shooting. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Did you guys shoot him? Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Oh, don't worry. We will figure this out sooner or later. Never been worried in my life, Lawman. I'm going to take off now. Kim, with me, outside. Kim, there are s there is some strange ass shit going on. Very strange shit. Hmm. But what we do know is this: the Hardy Boys are hiding something. But first, there's something that I should interact with. The damaged ledger. This is the ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes on the case. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Urinal? Okay. Um, anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Oh. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Let's uh, look at the toilet paper then, shall we? It's just toilet paper sticking to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Yeah, let's just take that off. That's kind of gross. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. Let's uh, inspect the clip then, shall we? An aluminium block runs the width of the board biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your fingers across the aluminium. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Looks like an official mark, made to be low visibility outside the right circumstances. Hey, Lieutenant, what is this? What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? 
It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example? All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all. Thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Uh, browns the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. What do you mean? Is that all? That's it? The notebook is annual. It says 51 on what remains of its cover. A molten strap of cardboard. Everything prior to this must have belonged to a previous volume. In short, there was more. Yeah, so this naming convention. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. Oh my. And they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another, the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, the Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more light-hearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean a non-numeric one. With titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM. Right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have a case n named the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Uh, well, counter pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Commit to paper using the pen that I gave you. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. 
cross out what we've been finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. You're a swashbuckler with that pen, Harry, and it feels good. Feels like completion. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Hmm. The hanged man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The hanged man. Good strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start putting it the hanged man. It's good to be sorted this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done expecting these. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Hmm. 42% chance. Well, let's do that later. Let's just finish this up and then finish up the episode. Oh, well, we'll see. Browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. Misconduct fine? A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. A tool for manipulation. Give the lowest amount and people will be ingratiated to you. Ah. Station call? These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small it could be considered downright cute. And field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Yes, enough of this. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. Oh, yeah. What delicious power hid within this pathetic mess. You feel better. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Yeah. Look at the small... Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The u 4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Where did you say the color was? Blue. Oh. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Shake it. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? And something small inside? Light, made of paper or cardboard, or dried flowers, perhaps. Peek inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How would I open it? With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Interface, 83%. Mm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee, slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know. Slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Pick up the ticket stubs. 
Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachon East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Fucking kill yourself, you asshole. What? The words just crossed your mind somehow. Um, who are they for? Who do you think? Uh, pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Smell it first. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavor. A touch of cinnamon. The end of summer. You think the label says, Tutti Frutti. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. A young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Throw it away, please. But it will make me happy. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachon, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. What was that? Frisson covers your entire body, a feeling of cold, a persistent chill. Throw the card in the wind. Just like that, the wind picks it from your fingers. Cold, they let go. The wax paper rustles, a whisper light and low. Then a sudden gust raises the postcard to the drizzle gray sky above, away from you. A small piece of paper dances above Martinez, above slow waves crashing the shore and the war-torn houses and the new Batiment Nouveau alike. Above you, looking up to the gray sky, greasy and wet. Oh, that gray sky is greasy and wet. Oh. <clears throat> okay. And above the distant streets, the 881, even above the old fish market and the church, its material existence is lost. This great city will pocket it for you. For your own sake, forget about it. Not for yourself. For the people of Revachon. For the 80,000 under your jurisdiction. Under Precinct 41, where typewriters fire long into the night and officers walk the great steps and the bridge. Long after the card has landed in the cold shore waters, its writing dissolved, material disintegrated. The wind carries the keepsake away from you to the southwest. The pale violet dot disappears. What was in there? No, you should not have thought back at it. Now some of it is on your mind again. Hmm. Look at the ledger again. The ledger of oblivion-induced mental health is just as shabby as the damaged ledger was. A bunch of sodden papers sags from the clipboard in your hand. Smell it. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat. The stuff of death itself. And then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. You know, like the bits they put into public piss bowls, probably called Fermi Discrete, or Axel, or something. At some point in its journey, the ledger has seen the inside of a public toilet. I know, I know. Sylvia already told me I dunked it in the toilet. If you knew it was dunked in the toilet before getting chucked into the trash, why are you sniffing it? <laughs> <laughs> the option to sniff was there, so... So you wanted to get in on the trash toilet stink collab. Find out what happens when those two get funky together. Okay, pal. Are you angry with me, nose? Yeah. Turns out your nose doesn't like self-indulgent literal shit huffing. Kel fucking surprise. Come on, no more. The ledger is going back down, away from your nose now. Put the ledger away. <laughs> Well, then I guess that will be the end. We f fucking stood up to Titus. We didn't really do anything. We actually kind of...
fail the check, but it's fine. We'll get it right next time. Maybe. I don't know. And we saved ourselves from some... I don't know. Bye.